Holla ballers! What's going on? It's Preacher. And I want to get a bit nostalgic with you today. I'm going to talk at you for a while if you'll indulge me. But recently we've obviously seen the discussion of achievements has come back. Achievements for five mans are making a return in Worlds of Draenor. We discussed that last week. And the player base is having a very mixed reaction, in fact. It's not representative of what the reaction on my channel was, which was pretty much overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, it's a 10-minute inconvenience, but if it pushes that skill level up of the bear, of the minimum player... I mean, let's face it, guys. Every now and again, we need to do some stuff with strangers in World of Warcraft, and we would like those strangers to be capable, or at least have learnt a little something along the way, which right now we can kind of assume that maybe four out of five people in our five-man LFD are pretty much garbage, which is a sad state of affairs, all things considered. But people are reacting badly to this. And people are reacting badly because of that minimum standard is set so low, unfortunately. Um, it's not something we're exactly surprised by. But I was I was pretty surprised to see how open people are about being unable to do even minimum standard proving grounds. I mean, I've done the proving grounds for you guys several times. I showed them. I did the gold medals to show off what they're all about. I did them again recently to show you in a video. I didn't have a problem with them, even fixing add-ons in the gold medal challenge I did for the Dressed or Druid. I was just sorting my add-ons out, it wasn't difficult. But, I'm not the average player. And when I see that, in fact, people are saying quite openly they've killed Garrosh normal, and can't do bronze in the Proving Grounds, then I, that paints an ugly picture, man. It paints an ugly picture. And it brings us back to the age-old argument of the things we think we want compared to the things we need. And this kind of comes in the state of attunements. There's going to be talk a little bit about five mans, but I think difficulty in five mans is a conversation for a different day, especially with regards to things like, oh, we need Shattered Halls Heroic again. No, we don't. No, we do not. But again, a conversation for a different day. What I'm going to show you is something that I found while doing my research for the next big video. Spoiler alert about what it probably is now. Uh, but here it is. It's the Burning Crusade Raid Attunement Chart, third revision, Parentheses, yes, and it really is this complicated. Prepared by Heal from Vodka during the Burning Crusade beta. Ooh, for those of you who weren't there in the Burning Crusade, drink it in, friends, that this is what awaited you after you capped your character. For those of you who have been playing in Wrath of the Lich King, who were playing in Kata, and were playing in, of course, Mr. Pandaria, where you capped, and you had the whole open world and your choice of what to do. And most of you complained. It's not enough content, Breacher. It's not enough. I'm off and I'm already leveling alts two weeks after we started. There are good and bad points about the achievement process, which is why it's difficult for me to talk about. What we can't say is broad sweeping statements like, oh yeah, achievements are good. We should bring back achievements. Or achievements are bad. We should do away with achievements. Achievements are always relative as to what they actually reward. What am I receiving for completing this achievement process? Am I doing an endless amount of achievements to be rewarded with a little loot crate that gives me some sort of mediocre item of the monkey? Or am I being rewarded with something worthwhile? Also, how long do these achievements take? It's also a good question. Right. Two ways of looking at this, so we'll do the good and the bad. First and foremost, if, if you met these conditions, which I did, if you started at the launch of the expansion and you were in a guild that was reasonably capable, then the achievement process for the Burning Crusade, and I'm going to say it, was one of the most well-designed things I've ever come across in World of Warcraft. And I believe to this day, one of the reasons why the Burning Crusade's sub-numbers went through the roof. And the reason I say that is this. One, as we just said, in Mists of Pandaria and Wrath of the Lich King and whatnot, people complained that there wasn't enough to do at endgame besides, like, I've got to do a rep farm with a faction that doesn't really get me anything. Everyone, you know, the Kalawak, or I got a fishing rod, yay! Or something along those lines. And in Kata, it was similar. In Mists of Pandaria, it was rep grinds that were actually gated in the form of only being able to get rep through, grip, through dailies, which had a set amount of dailies per day. And, of course, weren't exactly stellar rewards. And on top of that, you didn't have five-man heroics, did we? Most Mr. Pandaria had the most horrific start to any expansion ever. It's got to be said, it was the epitome of bummer. Um, there was not much to do. People were leveling alts almost immediately in Mr. Pandaria, which should never be the case. After a new expansion, you shouldn't be off leveling a different character. You should be like, God, I've got so much to do on this character. How can I possibly level another? But, yeah, that was what happened. The reason I said the Burning Crusade achievement process was so wonderful is that every time you logged in, 
This is from genuine experience. Every time you logged in, you had something to be getting on with. This achievement process looks complex, but only when you realize that its end result at the top there, Mount Hajal, was actually tier 6. This is two tiers of raid content you had to work through, which meant that along the way, you were doing raids that were relevant to your interests, and outside of those raids, you had plenty to be getting on with to get ready for the next tier of raiding. What we had was a balance between actual raids and then non-raid content which would be rewarded later after those raids were done. And those non that non-raid content was done in smaller groups that you could get together with your friends and make little groups to go and do various tasks, such as completing the Trials of the Naru, which were the heroic five-mans. You could be doing that while completing Gruul's Lair and Karazhan. But then again, even before we can step foot in Karazhan, and this kind of highlights the problem with this achievement process, which wasn't something that affected me, but affected my guild and resulted in me kicking a lot of people. Karazhan, the entry-level raid. And it is the entry-level raid. It's the warm-up raid. Raiding was based around 25-man in TBC, but Karazhan, of course, is a 10-man, as most of you will know. You've probably been there if you didn't do it at relevant times. You probably went there for transmogs or to experience the luxurious voice acting of Moroz and Aran. But to do Karazhan when TBC originally came out, let's talk very briefly about the process. I would have to do the Karaz I would have to cap. Then I would have to do the Karazhan quest line, which let me tell you was pretty extensive. A lot of five-man outdoor world content involved there. Then we had to do Shadow Labs normal, Steam Vaults normal, Architraz normal, but before I can do that, I need the Architraz key, which means I need to do the Mechana and the Botanica. Before I do them, I need the Architraz quest line. Before that, I need to get Flying Mount, which is going to set me back a few Gs, and is also going to be 60% speed, my god. Then I need to go and do the Dark Portal, but before that, I need to do Durnhold. Before that, I need to do the Caverns of Time Entrance Quest, and then I will get the Karazhan Key. That sounds pretty awesome to some of you, and sounds awful to other people who, but like, then again, bear in mind, a lot of this stuff is stuff you're going to be doing anyway. These are normal mode dungeons where you would go to gear up for raiding anyway, right? Not that big of a deal. It kind of is a big deal. When people start falling behind, and this is where the achievement process goes wrong and why it was scrapped. The Karazhan key. What would have been nice is Blizzard kind of stuck to their guns. Maybe. And this is where I sit on the fence and said, you know what? You can't get to Karazhan unless you have the key. Problem with that. And the original system was as long as one person had the key, he could open the door for everybody else. The problem is, you'll always have that guy, and you know who you are. You probably need a summon to every fucking raid. <laughs> you probably always stood in Ogrimmar when it's like raid time. Okay, ready to go. Cool, summon me. You're probably that guy who knows somebody else who is Johnny Reliable, which generally I was. And if I'm always playing with him, then I don't really need to worry too much about this other pointless stuff because he can open the door for me. You know who you are, and you know who you are if you're Mr. Reliable. Generally, five people got the Karazhan key. Because those were the people who'd managed to defeat the Dark Portal, which was no easy feat. And then everybody else just let them open the door. And once somebody can... This is always the interesting thing with people in general, not just in WoW. Is once somebody can open the door, you kind of lose interest in trying to do all that hard stuff. Because the dark, all the stuff that we talked about there was pretty difficult. Doing the Dark Portal was pretty difficult, right? I mean, when, in the early stages, God, that, don't compare it to what you do today. Please don't compare it to what you do today. That portal was very fucking tough. Real tough. And then you had the problem. Because other people didn't want to do that. In fact, the reason I had to kick people is they refused to help themselves. Which I have no time for personally. As, as, as a human being, I have no interest in pe helping people who can't be asked helping themselves. Which is why I had to create an alt to hide from doing the heroics. I ran so many people through those dungeons to the point where I was sick to death of doing them. Gotta remember, if you want to compare these to challenge modes, feel free. I would argue these were far more difficult than the current challenge modes. And then bear in mind that the speed run for Shattered Hall's Heroic was 55 minutes to speed run it. 55 minutes compared to, I think, the longest uh, goal challenge mode at the moment is 20 minutes, I'm going to say. Shallow's 20 minutes, and that's usually with time to spare if you do Jandies properly. So, yeah... I would argue they were they were considerably more difficult than even the challenge modes of today. But also bear in mind that player mechanics were different, which plays a huge role in that kind of stuff. So people start dropping behind, and this is why the achievement process sucks. On the one hand, I thought it was brilliant. 
Every time we'd finished a raid, it was off, off to do this. Who wants to make a group to go and try and do Shadow Labs Heroic immediately after the raid finishes? Who wants to go and do this? And then you'll have people like, oh, I'm on the quest too. Like, yeah, let's go and do that. Emails, messages, forum posts flying around, organizing groups outside of raids to get stuff done. Because there was always something to do. And I loved that. At no point did I log in at CBC for the first six months and think, best I go and do my dailies. Because no, I had so much to be getting on with, which made this achievement path, this journey to go on, Really cool, because it wasn't stuff you needed to do immediately. You could go and do your professions and stuff still, because I'm not going to be in Tempest Keep for a little while. But then you have to deal with the natural natural human behaviour of people who just can't be asked. And it's not even because they don't have the time, they just can't be asked. One of the first people I ever kicked in the TBC was a guy who already had a level 70 alt and hadn't finished his achievement process. The basic stuff. And I said, why have you got that alt? And he said, oh, I couldn't find a group. Did you try? Yeah, he asked a couple of times in guild chat. I was like, dude, that's not good enough. You're going to have to go. I can't have somebody in my guild who is just waiting for, to have his hand held all the way there. And ultimately, it comes down to some people just weren't good enough. They couldn't complete this this five-man content. Also, remember, this five-man content was designed for raiders. A lot of people forget that the original TBC five-man heroics were for raiders. They weren't for freshly dinged characters by any means, which is why there was such a staggered process to get entry. It's a mixed bag, and I want to know your feelings on it. Do you like the idea that when you cap, you've actually got a journey to go on, which might actually take you through most of the expansion? Bearing in mind that this journey probably will have to be cut off in a reasonable amount of time, because ultimately you can't have new people joining the game and being so far behind. Or can you? I've always been a staunch supporter of linear raid content. I actually don't mind it. But that's always dashed in the in my dreams when it comes to we've got 24 people and there is a 25th online, but he doesn't have the key. I can remember having to go back and attune people by killing Kel'thas and Lady Vash while we were months later down the line doing some well and whatnot. And it's, you know, at those times I really, really hated the achievement process and I didn't want to do it anymore. But I've got to say for the start of an expansion, absolutely glorious. Or maybe some of you look at this and just think, fuck that, I just want to do whatever I want. If I want to do my stuff through PvP or I want to do it through dailies, then balls to it. What's your opinion? That's what I want to talk about. Because I have nostalgic feelings about it, good and bad, which is always important. But do you prefer the new system where you choose whatever the hell you want to do? A proving ground silver isn't really an achievement process for anybody worth his salt, let's be honest. You're still going to do whatever the hell you want to do. Do you prefer that or would you actually prefer that you have something like a sheet? I had this pinned to my wall of what I had to do, and I loved it, but maybe that's just me. Let me know, guys. See you later. Bye.